Welcome to Private Club Radio, your weekly source for industry education, news and discussion. Broadcasting from Tampa, Florida, ladies and gentlemen, here is your host, Gabriel Aloisi. Hey, hey, happy Monday. Welcome to Private Club Radio, episode number 9595. Nearing in that 100th number, would love to have you call in. And tell us what you think of the show, what your favorite guests have been, what your favorite moments have been. Go to privateclubradio.com slash inbox and leave me a voicemail. Would love to have you participate. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for being here. We've got a unique guest today, something a little bit different. And if you've been listening to the show the last, really the last year, you've noticed that I've been trying to get some unique perspectives on this show, trying to do some things a little differently, get some guests that are a little outside the box, get you thinking. If this show gets you thinking every week, that is mission accomplished in my book. And so today's guest is Lisa Brantley. You might know her on Instagram if you follow her on Instagram as Lisa Marie, but she's Lisa Brantley and she'll be joining us today talking about what it's like to build a social media presence on Instagram, number one. But number two, as a club, something that you can do that you might not have ever thought about is actually get an influencer to be the face of your club or the face of your brand. And so Lisa Marie is going to talk a little bit about how you can do it. We're going to have a lot of fun. She's really lively and entertaining. So stay tuned for that one. I'm really excited to announce that I'm teaming up with Norm Spitzig on a special education session that we've just launched. We're calling it Wildly Successful Private Club Membership, marketing for all clubs in all generations. So I talk about millennials and Gen Xers in there. Norm covers the baby boomers and the silent generation. And we have a lot of fun during this session talking about what are the hot button issues for each generation? We discuss the similarities and the differences. We analyze the joining trends and we present the proven techniques and specific effective strategies to identify, attract, and retain a full complement of members for your club, no matter the generation. It's going to be quite the entertaining experience if you get a chance to attend. The first one we're giving is in Little Rock, Arkansas, the Country Club of Little Rock on November 13th. We'll be speaking to the local CMAA chapter. But if you've got a chapter or you've got a board retreat and are looking for a unique education session about how to build your membership, this is one that you should absolutely consider. Everyone who attends is going to leave with a copy of the Definitive Guide to Membership Marketing as well as a copy of one of Norm's hilarious books. He's got a number of them now. I think he has four out there. So you can choose which of those you'd like to get. And if you want to find out a little bit more, I can send you some information. Just email me at gabe at privateclubagency.com. I'll send you a little bit more info on the education. Wildly successful private club membership. All right, it's time to bring on our featured guest. Lisa Brantley, who you may know as Lisa Marie on Instagram and some other social media networks, is an all-American sponsored golfer, co-producer, and TV show host from the suburbs of Houston, Texas. Lisa gained recognition as a golf ambassador on social media, which gained her popularity and thousands of followers. With that came the title Influencer where Lisa Marie works with many different golf brands, helping promote their product or service by creating engaging marketing content for them to post on the web. Lisa is not only a marketing guru when it comes to social media, she also engages her fans on TV by hosting her own golf television series, Teed Up with Lisa Marie. Lisa, welcome to Private Club Radio. Hey there, how are you? (laughs) It's great to have you on, yeah. I've been following you, uh, awesome. your Thanks Instagram for having me. Page. And yeah, it's very, very interesting stuff there. So uh, first off, Great. I just want to talk to you about how you got into golf. I know you've got a, a pretty unique story there. Can you let our listeners know how you got into the game? Yeah, absolutely. I actually started playing when I was 12 years old. When my dad introduced me to the game, he started taking me to the driving range with him just so we could have some bonding time together. 
And I was just a natural at it. I was really good. Um, he was really surprised. He was like, he must just have beginner's luck. And so <laughs> I would continue to... I know. I was like, well, thanks, Dad. So we would continue to go out there. And I was just really good. And I enjoyed going with him. It was more for me, just a time to spend with my father. I wasn't like really wanting to get competitive with it or anything. But he saw a lot of potential and convinced me to try out for my junior high team like a week later after I had just started going with him. So I literally knew nothing about golf. I only knew to keep my eye on the ball, you know, basically how to swing a club and but nothing about the sport, nothing about the games or the rules. And I went and tried out and I actually made it. And I was shocked. I was like, you're picking me? Uh, but it was such a great experience because I learned everything about the game from my coach when I was in junior high. He just taught me everything um, about the game. And so that was a great learning experience for me. And then as I got older, I went on and I played for my high school team um, here in Katy, Texas. So I played at Katy High School. Uh, so I did that. But I was also on the drill team. So I was just doing a lot of different things in high school. I wasn't really big into it. Um, and then I actually went off to college and I didn't play in college. I was more focused on having a family. I was dating someone very seriously and we ended up getting married and having a son. So I have a little boy. He's four years old and his name is Hayden. Nice. (laughs) Yeah. And so I had him and it wasn't until after I had him that I got back into golf. And the reason for that is because I unfortunately went through a divorce after he was born. And that made me very, very depressed. I went through a really bad time in my life. And I just didn't know how I was going to get out of that. Um, You know, my family, my friends were very concerned about me. I was even worried about myself. It was when I didn't have my son on the weekends that it was you know, that was when I was in my darkest times. It was almost like, you know, I lost my family. I was like, I, I had a miscarriage. He was gone and everything that I had wanted and worked for was not there anymore. And it's kind of crazy because I hadn't played golf in a really long time. Um, I knew I always was kind of a natural at it and I enjoyed it. Um, but golf pretty much found me again. And I went out to the driving range with a friend and I hit the ball for the first time and I got hooked. And I was like, man, this is the best feeling. And I can't even describe it to you. Just, it literally saved my life. Um, Sounds like so a lot I better than a pint, my... of, pint of Ben and Jerry's or something. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Right. It's much better than sitting home and getting fat or drinking too much. And yeah, just crying yourself to sleep. I mean, it that became my void and that became my vice. And I just became addicted to the process of getting better because anyone who knows golf knows how hard it is and how frustrating it can be. But it's also one of the most rewarding games out there. And that's sure. what I really, really captured when I got back into it. And that's kind of why I started doing everything that I do now because I wanted everyone to experience what I was experiencing. Um, and I started thinking, you know, how can I help others now that the sport has helped me so much that I want to turn around and be able to use my voice to do it for others. So I'm in the process of putting together free golf clinics for vets that have PTSD, Um, you know, helping other people who are going through a really rough time use golf to be able to heal some of those wounds. And it's also a great networking opportunity. It's a great way to get yourself back out there and to find jobs. Um, it's a great way to meet people if you're if you're looking for friends. Um, I found a really great app that's called Golf Match uh, that helps match you up with local golf, golfers in your area if you don't know anyone that golf. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually became an ambassador for them. Um, so yeah, I you know the opportunities there were just endless, and I was like, this is this is it. So I took it and I ran with it. And that's kind of where I got to where I am now. Yeah. So let's talk about where you are now, which is you're, you're really a, an influencer online on social media. And so how did you make that transition from someone who was just into playing golf to someone who actually was out there and 
and um, becoming a personality and, 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 a, and a, uh, a face of, of other organizations out there. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how it happened because you know what? That is the, probably the most popular question I get from everyone. And to this day, I still don't really know how to answer it. But the best way that I know how to answer it is that there is, you know, social media is getting so big now. And a lot of people are gravitating towards that. And so companies are seeing people who have a big following fan base. And they're saying, hey, will you wear my product and take a picture with it and post it on your social media so people can see my brand and you know tag me? So um, that's kind of how it got started is just different companies and brands would reach out to me and say, hey, if I send you a hat, will you wear it and take a picture and tag me? And I was like, you know, sure, why not? Like, you know, I don't mind doing that. I'm going to sure. be out in the golf course anyways. Yeah, I'm like, I could use a new hat. <laughs> um, <laughs> like free clothes, why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, that's how I ended up getting one of my apparel sponsors. Is she's just started? Uh, it's actually Joe Fit Apparel. Um, they have clothing for women. They do uh, golf and tennis, and they have really cute clothes. They just started sending um, some of the ladies on Instagram who had a lot of followers and just said, "Hey, you know, here's some free clothes. If you don't mind wearing them on the golf course, do you mind, you know, putting it on and tagging us?" And anytime I would do that, they would then take that picture on my page, post it on their page. So there's a whole new set of eyes Mm -hmm. that are now seeing me that haven't seen me before because I have my followers. Well, now here's their followers that are seeing me and they're like, oh, hey, you know, this girl's wearing their stuff. I'm following their page. I want to go follow her and see what more she has to show for this. So then they'll start to follow me. And then I would do that for another brand. And then they would take that picture and put it on their page. And that's a new set of eyes. And then they would start following me. So my followers just kept growing and growing. And people have asked me, have you paid for your followers? Like, do you pay for likes? And the answer is absolutely not. Like, I am not that kind of person. Everything that I have is completely grown organically. And that's what I'm trying to teach brands out there is that that is possible. Like you can be authentic and be able to have people want to see more of what you're offering. You just have to know how. Yeah. And I think that's the real, the real value in social media is to show people your true personality. And if you're a polarizing figure, that's not bad either. You know, some people are going to like you and yeah. some people are not. I bet you probably have some haters out there. Oh yeah. I mean, I've had some crazy stuff happen. I'm not going to lie. And I've had people critique my swing because everyone thinks that they're a golf coach. Everyone thinks that they're like the best golfer, but it's so funny. There's, there's a thing that I like to say is amateur golfers teach other amateur golfers. Like if you really want, (laughs) everyone is a pro golfer out there. They think, but no, yeah. So I've I've had some, you know, critiques out there, but I don't mind it. You know, I just, I take it with a grain of salt and, Keep a smile on my face. What's your handicap, by the way? Oh my goodness! Well, I would say it's probably a sixteen. Okay, all right. Well, you know, it's been a while since I've gotten it verified. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's still yeah. much better than the, than the average golfer out there for sure. I think they yes, say ninety percent of people can't even break a hundred or something like that. So that's not not too shabby. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I, if I have too many beers, then maybe. You know, it may be a lot higher. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, um, but we won't talk about those days. <laughs> yes, this is a family show here on Private Club Radio. Yes. <laughs> so exactly. a lot of people are probably asking why, you know, why would I bring on an influencer here onto the show? You know, what value could you mm-hmm. add to the audience? But for me, I think it's great because first of all, Instagram is such an important network right now for the types of people yes. that are coming into the private club world. And so I'd love for you mm-hmm. to sort of talk about how you can build an audience, some, some strategies on Instagram, what works, and if you could share some of your tips from, from spending some time there and building this huge following that you do have. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if you want to talk about you know, clubs being able to benefit from an influencer, um, one of the ways of being able to do that is I recently um, had a golf course out here or a country club um, that has sponsored me. And so I can go out there and basically hit free range balls and I can play for free. Um, And what they get out of that is experience from someone who's not working there. I'm not making any money off of them. I'm just basically using their experience for, you know, my needs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people 
think, or companies or brands will think, okay, well, in my advertisement, I'm just going to promote what we have to say about our company. Yes, that's worked in the past. But what people have seen with the social media and the influencers is they value those people's opinion a lot more. If you were to ask a company or a brand, you know, tell me about your brand or your your club, of course, they're going to say great things about themselves. You know, yeah. it's yep. their brand. Um, but they're going to take the advice of someone who is basically out there actually playing it, who is living the lifestyle of being a member out there or being a regular, someone right. who's getting to know the staff just because it's a friendly face that's coming in. Um, that's really a huge perk that I'm seeing just because it's like stats are everything. Numbers are everything to people. But you can't post num- numbers on Instagram. You know, everything is picture content. So how are you going to translate that? You're not going to translate the numbers. You're going to translate the viewers by having these great reviews. Yeah. So that's how I see it. And I I think that a lot of people could benefit from that. And so I had a club out here called Longwood Golf Club sponsor me. And I actually did one of my episodes out there, Tia with Lisa Marie. Um, And I can tell you a little bit more about that because that kind of goes into it as well. Um, but unfortunately they just, we got hit by hurricane Harvey really bad. All the golf courses are still recovering and I don't know when Longwood's going to reopen back up. So, um, you may not see a lot on my page, you know, of me playing recently, especially out there just because of the hurricane. Um, but I do encourage these clubs to look at influencers in their area to see if there are, you know, anyone close by or even just invite someone who may live a few hours away. I live in Houston, but Dallas is about a four hour drive. Mm-hmm. And I've driven out to Dallas um, just to be able to play at a course for free and just basically put a review on my mm-hmm. social media. And it just helps them. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money. I mean, you could get deeper into it where you, basically or sponsoring this person and you know it it will cost a lot more money but you'll also get a lot more investment on your or a lot of a lot more return on your investment if right. you do it that way too. If I was, so basically what you're saying is if I'm a club I can go find someone who, like yourself who has a, a large audience who maybe resonates with my particular brand. So you have your own brand Lisa mm-hmm. Marie, which you know is is kind of you know fun and and um mm-hmm. like whimsical I guess you would say. Um, you I've mm-hmm. seen you post like um, cat whiskers on your face and things like that on Instagram. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you you have this very fun personality, which might work for a club that's really fun, and you might not work for mm-hmm. a club that's you know a, a, a different personality. But that club could go and mm-hmm. find somebody who's an influencer who who matches their brand personality and say, um, mm-hmm. you know, you've got an audience of fifty, a hundred, you know, thousand, a million people, and we'd love mm-hmm. for you to just come out, experience our course you know, take some pictures, mm-hmm. write an honest review and we'll take care of you. And then that way their club's kind of front and center for, for that entire audience that the influencer has. That, that can be a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, picking the right influencer is a huge part of it all. And that's actually why I'm offering a webinar where I'm going to go more into detail about that and talk about how you can find that perfect person for you. So that, that is definitely a great point. That's awesome. So actually, Lisa has a special gift for all of us here at Private Club Radio. If you're listening to the the episode today, she's actually going to let you in on that webinar absolutely free. It's a paid webinar, but for Private Club Radio listeners, it's going to be free if you use the code PCR when you visit her website. And uh, we'll give you that website here at the end of the interview. But Lisa, you know, how about some other tactics or tips in terms of how did you how did you build up to the audience that you have now? Was it just being authentic and and being your true self? Did you did you have did you do post at certain times of the day? What what are some tips for people out there? Yeah, so if you want to know, you know, when it comes to social media, what you could be doing on the back end, there's definitely statistics that show how many times that you should post a day um, and how you can grow followers that way. Um, I did not take that route. I 
I think that the way that I went about it is just the content that I created through my pictures was just fun and whimsical like you described. And I think a lot of people enjoy that because it's entertainment. Um, so I, I went about it that way. But there's definitely ways that you can go deeper into it in the back end. Whereas, you know, how many times you should post a day, um, what hashtags you should use, how you should tag people, how you can repost things. That takes a huge part in all of this. Um, and that's all everything that I'm going to be talking about in my webinar. But just to give, you know, a little teaser is one of the big things is, you know, how many times to post a day. Okay, some people blow up their social media. And they think, oh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But the thing is, do it once a day. And maybe not even once a day, maybe four times a week, because you want to give a little bit to suspense mm -hmm. and you don't want to like overload people, but you want to be consistent. Um, so for me, I've noticed that when I do it four to five times a week, once a day, that's the best time. Um, also, whenever you can have an influencer that can tell you. So each influencer has analytics on their page. So for my Instagram, it tells me the best time to post each day. It will tell me basically a demographic and say, this is everyone in your area. This is the percentage of females to males ratio that follows you. Mm -hmm. This is when you get the most likes at this time. So when I am creating content for a brand, and I'm posting something on my page, I take the analytics into consideration. And I think about that whenever I'm going to post it. So it's going to be different for everyone because I don't know exactly you know, what everyone's analytics say. But for mine, um, 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. are mm -hmm. the best times for me to post. So nice. I will, if I miss my 9 a.m. window, then I'll do it at 3 p.m. But I actually like the 9 a.m. window because I'll post it in the morning. And that gives me all day long to respond to people because people really love that when I respond to them. Well, that's a great um, point. And then I, said, mm -hmm. I, I just want to break in on that because that's, that's such a good point yeah. to make that a lot of times I think clubs or just, you know, anybody in general on social media it always kind of sees it almost as a one-way communication. And I think what makes, again, social media so great is that it's a conversation mm -hmm. starter. And so it's, it's mm -hmm. just as important to, to really be on top of those replies and, um, you know, keep up with the comments that are coming in and whatnot, as it is to, to actually put the content out there in the, in the first place. So I, I just think that's, that's mm -hmm. a awesome point you make there. Yeah, engagement is huge. And I think that reposting, if the brand reposts the next day, then that's the best option. If you do it too soon on top of, you know, when I'm doing it, and I'm engaging with people, mm -hmm. then it's just, it, it looks sloppy. Sure. So what I like to do is I like to have the brand post the next day and then I will start getting on there engaging with their post with their people. So that's the way that I like to do it. Every influencer is different and that's, you know, what you need to consider when looking for an influencer if you're considering on if you're considering using someone mm -hmm. is asking those types of questions, asking how many times do they post a day, you know, what are their analytics, what is their demographics? Do they engage with the people who are commenting and liking the post? Those are all things to consider when you're choosing someone. Um, and like I said, I'll go into a little bit more in depth in the webinar, but mm -hmm. there is a lot of information um, that's out there that, that's you know, good to consider for this. Sure, certainly. So are you getting into any of the live streaming or, you know, I think Instagram has an Instagram live now. Are you doing any of that? And do you, what do you see as, as the future of, of where Instagram is going? Yeah, so I recently just started doing that for the TV show. And people love it because they are, they're jumping on and they're seeing you read their comments. It's like they get excited and they start leaving more comments like, oh, she's reading my comment. I'm going to write another comment. So that's a great time for me to also promote people that I'm working with. And I use that to my advantage. Um, but what I've noticed with that is some people are just kind of getting on more for the entertainment aspect of it. They just want to hear their names. They just want to see you read, reading their comments. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't suggest that it has any benefit to, um, to any brands or, or golf clubs right now. Um, just because people are doing it more for entertainment aspects, like, oh, you know, she sees me, she sees that I'm on here, she's reading my comment. It's just <laughs> more of kind of like, um, 
validation for them, I think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but that's just what I've seen recently when I started doing it. it. It may change, but I think where it's at is doing definitely doing a post, posting things to the storyline, not necessarily a, a live story, but okay. you know things that you can edit and tag and something similar that you would put on your page, but it it goes on your story um, because it may not look as nice or it may not need to be up there as long as something that's permanent on your page because what you put on your story only lasts for 24 hours. Right. Um, But that's also a good time to look authentic too is just when you post on the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. What would you say to clubs who really fear putting themselves out on social media or, you know, partnering with an influencer that, you know, that they say, you know, we're historically a private club, you know, we don't want... Mm -hmm you know, there's always kind of you know, some hesitation there. What, what would your answer be about that? Yeah, and I see that. And I see a lot of hesitation with the way that things are going with today's generation because um, we kind of have been breaking out of the norm. Mm-hmm. And I say, think outside the box and just, you know, give it a go and see if it works for you. But it's it's not only going to help them, it's going to grow the game. And that's what us influencers are all about is growing the game. And the more we grow the game, the more members that they get because the more people that are going to want to go out there and play. Mm -hmm. Um, So, I mean, there are some places that are a little iffy about it. And and I don't really know exactly the right terms to use. (laughs) Well, my my argument, I guess, guess, is that, Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't tell your story, someone else is going to do it for you. Because just like you said that, you know, if other people are going to post about your property, why not have somebody mm-hmm. who, who again aligns with your brand who you can control the message mm-hmm. actually do do the storytelling for you it's a much more effective way of, of spreading a message so that that's my argument anyway right <laughs> yeah no no you're exactly right I yeah. love that so you're into something kind of interesting that that when we were talking uh, before this interview it, which I think is could be actually a kind of a unique fundraising opportunity but it's something called speed golf so can you Talk to us about speed golf and how maybe clubs out there who are running some of these charitable tournaments can use that to uh, to increase the um, the contributions and whatnot of the of the players. Absolutely! Oh my goodness! You know what? I'm so glad that you asked me that because I just filmed an episode on speed golf yesterday and I had so much fun. Nice. Like I, I'm not going to lie to you, I was dreading it a little bit. So I. <laughs> I connected with a guy here in Houston named Scott Dolly, who is the founder of Speed Golf USA. And I met with him and he was just, he's so enthusiastic and he, he's very athletic and, and that's the way he's trying to grow the game is by showing, you know, all these people who are really into fitness and real athletes that, Hey, you can be super athletic and play golf too, you know, just run it while you hit the ball. And I'm like, this is a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, God, doesn't this go against everything we've ever been taught? Like you're supposed to be calm and, you know, mental game. And, and he's like, Lisa, just give it a go. And I, so I started to train for it a little bit. I started doing some running and then we shot an episode with him yesterday um, on my show, Tia, with Lisa Marie. And I will tell you what, I was so surprised how good I played. I was like, there's no way. I didn't think about it because I wasn't thinking about the shot each time. I think that I actually play worse when maybe my mental game is just not that good. Sometimes but you just got to get in the blast. zone. Yeah, sometimes you just in yeah. the zone. Well, I think I, I actually heard yeah. there's like been research that... Um, um, whether they looked at like the brain functions of a amateur, like a, you know, just a beginner golfer and someone who's like a, you know, mm-hmm. middle and a pro. And there's much, there's, you know, you think about it when you're, it makes sense when you're first learning the game, you're thinking, okay, I got to have my hands like this and I got to do this and I got to mm-hmm. open, my, open my right foot a little or my left foot a little bit. And I've got to, you know, make sure I get my stomach to 12 o'clock and all these things that you're thinking about. Whereas when you're just in the flow or in the zone of, you know, playing all the time, you don't even think about that. Mm-hmm. Stuff. I'm second nature. So that, that kind of makes sense actually. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, it's called, Oh no, I'm drawing a blank. I just did this. Oh, it's something band M- mental band. I think okay. is what it's called. Mm-hmm. I did an episode. I'm actually doing, um, 
marketing for a golf school out here. It's called Golf Performance Group. And it's out here in Houston, Texas. And I'm like helping them with their rebranding and their social media. And I got connected with them because I did an episode out there. And the golf performance director, JJ Wood, he was like, we have to do this on the show. It's so crazy. It's this band that you put on your head and you have an app and you go up there and you do your pre-swing or you do your pre-shot routine. And then you it shows when you're thinking and when you're calm. And I'm like, oh, this thing is going to show that I'm just like freaking out the whole time. <laughs> so because <laughs> I'm just so like uppity and like hyper all the time. But um so like I said, maybe my mental game is not that great. And that's why I'm better at speed golf. So I, I got up there and I'm wearing this focus band, I think is what it's called. I've heard and that. yeah, focus band. And I'm wearing this on my head. And JJ Wood has the app in his hand and he's looking at me and he's like, okay, do your pre shot routine. And I get up there and I'm like, what the heck do I think about? <laughs> like, I can't think. And then I'm like, okay, well, if I'm not thinking now, I'm thinking even harder. And he's <laughs> like, you're red. You're, you're in the red. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's going, you're red. You're in the red. Stop thinking. You're in the red. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And this is on TV. So I'm like, shoot, what am I going to do? So I think about my son. I start to think about my son and he's like, okay, you're green. They do whatever you're doing now because you're in the green. And I'm like, well, I'm still thinking, but I'm calm. That's your I'm happy thinking place. about my son. Yeah, that was my happy place. And and then I started to, to think about someone I was dating. And then he was like, you're red again. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he didn't stick around long. Uh, no, he didn't stick around very long. <laughs> uh, yeah, he was like, oh, you're red again. And I was like, okay, think about Hayden. And then, oh, okay, you're green. And it was the craziest thing. I got to watch it back um, when, the, when the episode aired. I'm like, wow, that's so crazy. So yeah. You know what? There is that. But I think that that's maybe why I did better at speed golf because I wasn't, you know, really thinking about it. I was thinking about running and not like falling and tripping. I wasn't thinking about my like shot or like, you know, a terrible date that I went on or, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wasn't thinking about any of that stuff. Um, so I don't know. Maybe that put me in my happy... I think being athletic and being active does put people... And they're happy place. There has been so many studies around that. And that's why there's a lot more people, you know, all about the healthier lifestyle is because there are, you know, statistics that prove that. Oh, yeah. So I think that that maybe has something to do with speed golf. I don't know. It was really interesting. And it was probably one of the most fun episodes that I've done. Like I was smiling ear to ear by the time I was doing my closer. I was like, I can't wait to do this again. So I'm actually playing in the championship tournament in December and I'm like, I just can't wait. It's going to be wow. awesome. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. So I, I strongly advise people to look into speed golf because it's really fun. So you're, you're hitting the ball. You're just r- basically running to the next shot and, and, and going from there. I love that idea. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to yeah. try yeah. I don't know how long I last, but I want to try it. <laughs> You know, just do a par three and just see, and you're going to be like laughing and having fun. And, you know, you mm-hmm. could just do it for fun. You don't have to do it with tournaments, but it's, it's yeah. a great workout. Let's talk about your show, um, Tee It Up with Lisa Marie. How long has that been going mm-hmm. on? Where, where do people find out about it? And just tell us about tell us about that a little bit. Yeah. So I've been doing the show since April. Um, and it basically got offered to me when I was working on a promo video with a producer out here in Houston, we went and shot some test footage for the promo video. And the promo video was just going to be for social media. And he went out to top golf with me. So I was like, let's just go have some fun, shoot some test footage and see what we can get. And by the time he left, he told me he was thinking to himself, okay, like this girl needs to be on TV. Her personality is just way too big to only do social media. And he being a producer, that's what he does. He owns his own um, company called Bounce Multimedia here in Houston. And he called up a friend who work, who owns a TV network station here in Houston. It's uh, the New DeMont TV. or Sorry, it's New DeMont TV Network, yes, on KUGB. Mm-hmm. And called Mark Kennedy up and said, Hey, I met this girl, Lisa Marie. We did some test footage, and this girl, you need to meet her. She needs her own TV show. 
So next thing I know, I'm having meetings with them and we're picking out names for the show and we're like filming that week. So it happened really fast, but I loved it because, you know, the whole reason I got back into golf and that it helped me so much was just throwing myself out there and living a lifestyle that I haven't lived in so long. And a lot of, a lot of struggles that I had with it was forgetting a lot of things. I didn't really, I was resting when it came to playing, but I didn't really know, you know, what courses were private, what courses were public, um, what I could wear to each course. Like you have described um, saying, you know, each club is different. They have their own needs and um, their Mm -hmm. own uniqueness about them. And I wanted to explore that. So that's basically what this show is about is I explore that. And um, and then, so I feature these golf courses and these golf clubs and these country clubs. And I talk about that and I talk about the different uniqueness of each club and what they have to offer. And I have a special guest on my show each week. Um, the first episode, I just had a, um, one of their golf or one of their, um, oh, what was it? His name is Mark Tillen. He was a, I guess the teaching pro out there and he did some tips and tricks. Um, but since then, I've had Scott Valley, who's the founder of Speak Off USA. Um, the next episode that we're shooting, I'm having Glenn Wilson, who is a long drive champion. And he's been on the Golf Channel a whole bunch. So with me, while I'm doing basically these course reviews, is I have these special guests with me. And we feature what they do for the sport and kind of how they play it, like the difference between speed golf and long drive. And then also showing the uniqueness of, of the courses and the clubhouses mm-hmm. and the members and the community out there. So there's just so many different aspects out there yep. that that's what I love to show. Like each episode is completely different. You won't ever see the same thing twice. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're about to wrap up season one. So if anybody wants to watch it, they can um, download the new DeMont TV network app, but it's actually called New Do N U D U Remote. Nice. So yeah, they can download that app. Yeah. And they can um they can watch it on demand. Since since it's a local show, you know, if they're not here in Houston, that's ways for them to watch it. Neat. And they can do that on their iPhone or Android, I guess, or mm-hmm, yeah, Apple. and you can also do it on a smart TV. Cool. Nice. All right. So the new do app, N U D U. Definitely check that out because that that is an entertaining uh, entertaining show you put on there for sure. Um, Thank you. Last question for you. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of people might be cons- have a question like, how do I reach out to an influencer? How do I get their attention? You know, because I want to you know approach mm-hmm. them and they're tough to approach or they feel nervous about approaching someone who's got a big following mm-hmm. or who's you know quote unquote famous. Do you have any advice mm-hmm. for? Um, how people, you know, should reach out to influencers like yourself? I do. Um, if they have an agent, a lot of times they'll put that in their bio. Um, I have an agent, for example. And so a lot of times I have people go through him because it's just easier for him to keep up with my emails or my DMs than it is for me. Um, the, the best way I would say to go about it is not going through DMs. Especially if they have, and DM means direct message. Right. Um, but if they have a lot of followers, if they have over 15,000 followers, they're getting a lot of DMs a day and they get overlooked. I've mm-hmm. missed so many DMs because of that. And I, I get frustrated. I'm like, y'all stop DMing me. Like, <laughs> I'll have fans. And it's very sweet when I have fans DM me. I love that, but I much prefer email. Mm-hmm. Just because it's it's hard for me to filter through all of my DMs. So the best way to reach out to an influencer is um, when you go to an Instagram page, you can click on the page and it will say contact. Most influencers have that on their page because they'll have like a public figure page. I'm sorry, it says email. So I'll have their picture, you know, show their followers, they'll have their bio. And then underneath their bio, it says email. Some people may have um, something else. I know that I have email. I'm going to look up one more person that I know. Yep, she has email. Most of us all have email on there. And if you just click on that, 
it'll pull up your email or I'll pull up their email and you can just shoot an email and say, Hey, do you do any collaborations? Um, do you do any sponsorship posts? You know, would you be interested in doing some work with us? And then just giving kind of a brief bio, what it is you're wanting and see if it's something that they'd be willing to do. And then I would just ask the questions, um, that I'm going to kind of go over my webinar, what, what you should look for in an influencer. Nice. So yeah, let's talk about that webinar one more time. So once again, if you use mm-hmm. the code PCR for Private Club Radio, Lisa is offering that to you complimentary, which is pretty cool of you. And how do they find it? What's the website, Lisa? Yeah, so it's Lisa, L-I-S-A, M for Marie, but it's just M, Brantley, B-R-A-N-T-L-Y dot com. Awesome. Lisa, I appreciate you taking some time with us today to talk about uh, influencer marketing and really enjoyed uh, catching up with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me on. It's such an honor. Many, many thanks to Rick Coffee for getting me and Lisa Marie in touch with each other and helping schedule this one. Really enjoyed speaking with Lisa and hope you can check out her Instagram page. It's quite entertaining. I think you'll enjoy it. All right, until next week, here's to your membership success. Private Club Radio is brought to you by the Private Club Agency, the premier marketing and consulting firm dedicated to helping clubs increase and retain their membership. Visit privateclubagency.com to learn more.